Hey, good afternoon, aviation specialists out there. I uh, wanted to thank you all again for joining us for episode three of the propeller balancing on the Cobra II. Uh, again, Scott Jefferson, regional solution specialist with ACES Systems. Uh, again, joining with uh, Josh Shively, our technical support on fixed wing uh, and many other things. Uh, today, again, we're going to be discussing what's important to a lot of people in aviation as far as uh, when you do reports, managing the data. You know, the last two sessions we went over how to, you know, do the setup and then also how to do the balance job. Now, again, we've got to get what we're going to do with that data. So, let, you know, taking this information and putting it into a format that's easy to obtain, uh, manage. Uh, again, that's Josh is going to be going through that with you today, as well as everything that comes in a, a Cobra 2 prop kit. On today's agenda, so I know it says on the screen that we're going to review the Cobra 2 introduction. What we're actually going to do is uh, set a kit up here and show you what all comes in a Cobra 2 prop kit. So if you're going to buy a brand new Cobra 2 prop kit, uh, these are some of the, the basic items that you're going to see in the kit, and we'll talk about those. Uh, we're also going to cover uh, field software upgrades. Uh, we'll talk about reviewing past jobs. Uh, we'll actually use the, the job we did on Thursday uh, as our example of, as far as reviewing those past jobs. Uh, we'll talk about creating a report. You've done the job, now what? What do we do with that data? Uh, how do we get it out of the analyzer if you're going to put it in a logbook or, or put it in your record somewhere? So how do we do that? Uh, we'll talk about formatting the USB stick. You've got a USB stick that comes in the kit. Uh, let's say you lose that thing or it gets damaged or broken or, and you've got one laying around. We'll talk about how you can format that and get it ready for use in the Cobra 2 analyzer. Uh, and we'll, the last thing we'll cover is retrieving the user's manual from the analyzer uh, or the website. Uh, the, the user's manual is actually installed in the analyzer, ready for download, or it's always also available on our website. So with that, we're going to uh, give us just a second to get up here. We're going to set this kit uh, up on the table and let you see uh, some examples of what comes in the kit. If you were to get a brand new uh, prop kit. Alright, so one of the first things that's going to show up in the kit you're going to see here is some documentation. Um, you'll have your prop protractor ring. Uh, this is what we're going to use uh, for phasing reference. Alright, there we go. I got guys off camera here telling me where to, to move my, my great hand modeling skills here. Uh, prop protractor ring here uh, that you're going to use is going to come in the kit. This is what you're going to go over the, the spinner to index it and to, to figure out uh, what your phase angles are. Also, you'll get this uh, paper copy of the ACES Guide Propeller Balancing. Uh, that is an FAA-approved document that you can go through that gives you some basic information about dynamic propeller balancing. Uh, this document is also available on our website for download. Uh, so if you, something happens with a paper copy, it gets damaged, blown down the runway, whatever the case, uh, we have that available for you. Of course, also in the kit, you're going to get the Cobra 2 analyzer. Uh, it's going to come uh, just like this, and when you pop it open, there's going to be some goodies inside of it as well. Mainly, the one I want to focus on is the Quick Start Guide. The Quick Start Guide is a, a, an extremely useful tool. I'd say about 80% of my calls with the Cobra 2, I usually end up referencing back uh, to this guide. And it gives just some basic information on the analyzer. It's basically like a, any other quick start guide you're going to get with like your cell phone or any other electronic piece of equipment. Some basic information on it, um, a little bit of do, uh, maintenance, care, how to use the keypads, what the USB sticks are for, and then also uh, how to get electronic setups on, uh, going to go over again re uh, reviewing the data uh, just like we're going to talk about here today and um, analyzer setup and analyzer information just getting you some basic stuff uh, about the analyzer in the kit. So quick start guide really really useful. Uh, there's also a calibration and maintenance uh, guide in here. I do want to point out that uh, TEC slash ACES systems is the sole um, provider for calibration services on any TEC ACES equipment. Um, we have a five to seven day turn time from the time the analyzer hits the back dock till it uh, turns around and goes right back out the door. And uh, I can almost promise you we're going to be very competitive with any other prices you get uh, for CAL services. And we're the only ones that um, have the software and the capability of uh, calibrating this equipment. Uh, so this 
gives you a little bit of information there about the calibration and maintenance. Uh, also, your five-year warranty that comes with the kit. And here's all of our contact information on the back of this, uh, this guide here. Also in the kit is your USB stick uh, and lanyard. Now, there's nothing fancy or special about this USB stick other than its size. And I don't mean the capacity of it. I mean the actual physical size uh, of the USB stick. And the reason that it's this size is if you put it in the, the slot of the analyzer and then forget about it and you close the lid, it's not going to damage anything. Uh, if you end up selecting your own USB stick, which is fine, and you format it and you close the lid on it and it damages the slot, I'm sorry that's not covered under the warranty. But um, just giving you a heads up that this is uh, what that's for and, and why. And, of course, you get the really nice uh, ACES logo uh, lanyard there. Okay. All right, moving along. Is the PhotoTac and reflective tape. Uh, the banner type photo tack is going to come in, uh, come in the kit. This is what you're going to use for your uh, tack source. Uh, most of the time it's going to have uh, this little part of the mount already installed on it that will work really well with this other cowling mount. Uh, is that good through the bag or do I need to take it out? Can you see it? That's good. All right. This just gets taped to the top of the cowl uh, and you can just use the, the, the included hardware uh, to mount those two together. Okay, so that's your photo tack and then uh, it comes with a 10-foot roll of the reflective tape. Uh, we highly recommend using this 3M brand of, of reflective tape because it is the brightest and will give you the best uh, signal. Yep. On our, on our website, you can also buy replacement tape. Uh, you can even buy, if you have an issue to where your lens gets scratched on the, the end of the photo tack and you need to get it replaced, you can buy uh, a replacement kit um, for the photo tack on our e-commerce site uh, on the ACES website. Okay? If you have any questions about that, you can always uh, feel free to give us a call. All right. Next up is the vibe sensor. So we've got our tack source. Now we need a, a, a source for our vibration. Uh, this is going to be the 991D-1 accelerometer. A great little sensor uh, for prop balancing. Uh, just perfect for all you, you possibly need for it. Uh, and with it, you've got your cabling. So from the uh, vibe sensor to the analyzer, We've got uh, a, 20, a standard 25-foot uh, cable that's going to have one end keyed just exactly for your 991D-1 sensor and the other end keyed to the analyzer. Uh, we have varying lengths of uh, TAC and VIBE cabling, so just talk to Scott, let him know what the distance is from where you're installing your equipment to where you want the analyzer to live uh, while you're doing your balance job, and we can accommodate you. Uh, we've got 25-foot variants, we've got 50-foot variants, and we've also got generic uh, TAC and VIBE cables that we can daisy-chain together uh, to, to suit just about any application. So we've got standard VIBE cable and uh, tachometer cable, both 25-foot uh, as the standard in the kit. Okay. Uh, next up is the charging uh, kit. In the kit comes with a charging brick. Uh, we do recommend only using this brick uh, as it has the... the Cannon plug that connects up to the side of the analyzer. You've got the 110 and 220 um, adapters there. Sorry, I keep getting off camera. <laughs> Where we got? There we go. All right. So we've got the the the, the 110 and the 220 options there uh, for the charger. All right. We give you a palm scale. Uh, this is again goes back to what we was talking about on Thursday, uh, garbage in, garbage out. If you tell the analyzer you're uh, putting 25 grams on and you just kind of eyeballed it and, and threw on 20, uh, then you know garbage in, garbage out. So we give you a, a, a little palm scale here so you can actually weigh out what it is you're using. Uh, this kit has a nice little uh, scale. It comes with a calibrated weight in there so you can actually check it uh, before you start to make sure that it's still accurate and and, uh, and good to go. So that is part of the kit as well. Next up is this little tackle box. Uh, nothing fancy or special about the tackle box. Uh, just figured we'd put that in there for you uh, so you could put some ba extra balance weights in there or hardware. Uh, but what does come in this uh, typically is this is where you're going to find your vibe sensor mount, just a standard uh, vibe sensor mount, and then also uh, these case bolt adapters. So what this is for is if um, you've got a, a reciprocating engine 
uh, and you got some thread showing on the outside of one of your case bolts, you can thread this onto the end of that case bolt and then use uh, your vibe mount on the end of it there and just secure that on with a nylon nut and in install your vibe sensor uh, and works great. And we've got a set of eight in here that should cover uh, just about everything, uh, all the different options out there. And then we have uh, these placards in here that uh, just to, sh to notice that this prop has been uh, dynamically balanced. Uh, so that all comes in the kit. So when you get your, uh, your Cobra 2 kit, those are some of the examples of what you can see uh, in uh, the new kit. Scott, you want to add anything to this while I'm packing back up? Or, uh... All right. All right, so give me just a second to get this packed back in. And, uh, we'll... You take care, I'll take care of this. And... All right. Moving back to our slideshow. Let's get going. Uh, all right. So field software upgrades. Uh, we just last week dropped uh, Software Pack 7. You'll hear us call it SP7 uh, or SP uh, whatever the number is that we release. Uh, so if you had your analyzer in here uh, previously, uh, January up until uh, just prior to last week, then you probably still have Software Pack 6 on your analyzer. Uh, and if you wanted to upgrade, you don't have to send your analyzer back into us. Uh, the software versions are available on our website uh, for download. So all you have to do is open a web browser and navigate to www.acesystems.com. It is, uh, there is a login required uh, to get to the software updates, but when you click on that login uh, in the top right hand corner of the screen, there will be an option down there to request a login. And usually within 24 to 48 hours or less, uh, we'll have you uh, approved and registered and with a login information back in your inbox. Uh, what we require is that you're a customer. And the way we verify that you're a customer is with a serial number of an analyzer. And we'll just use that serial number, cross-reference it in our database, and as long as there's, everything's matched up, we're good to go, and we'll, uh, we'll process that request. Okay? So once you're in, uh, you'll go to the Support drop-down uh, menu item there, and then select Software Updates. That's going to bring you to a, a screen similar to this. At the top of the screen, you'll see that Firmware Update to Service Pack 7. Uh, this software is good for our Cobra 2 and our Viper 2 uh, customers. So there's no need to download separate software for the Cobra 2 versus the Viper 2. Uh, the, the one version will do fine. If you notice on the left down there, you'll have two buttons to click, that Gen 2 Service Pack 7 button, and then right to the immediate right of that is Release Notes and Installation Instructions. Uh, those Release Notes and Installation Instructions will give you uh, a basic rundown of any bug fixes we made, any improvements we made, uh, any new uh, features that we've added to the software, it'll give you a basic rundown of uh, those things. Uh, at the end of the document, we'll also give you installation instructions. I'm going to walk you through the process live now on how to uh, update uh, an analyzer, and then uh, say you missed it or uh, whatever, you lose the, lose the link or whatever the case may be, you can always go to that release notes and installation instructions and um, uh, figure out how to do it. So depending on your browser or your computer, clicking on that Gen 2 Service Pack 7 button, it's going to download that software uh, either in your downloads folder or somewhere, uh, and it'll be a .upg uh, extension. Uh, don't try to click on it or open it because it's absolutely unreadable by anything other than the analyzer. So it's, its sole purpose is to go into the analyzer and be used. So the next thing you would do is insert your USB uh, drive that came into your kit uh, into your computer and then either copy and paste or drag and drop that SP7 file onto the root of the USB. And what that means is basically not in a folder. So as you can tell there on your screen we've got that ACES flash upgrade file uh, outside of any folder. It's just kind of hanging out there um, in the root of the USB uh, drive. So get that over onto your USB stick, either copy and paste or drag and drop it over there. Uh, for you legacy Cobra 2 customers or Viper 2 customers even, uh, if you've done this in the past uh, and you have a, a pre-existing like a, a SP6 or an SP5 uh, software file on there, you'll need to remove that file from the root because there can only be one .upg file extension 
uh, on that route before you uh, do the software upgrade. So if you've got a, another version on there that doesn't match uh, what you just downloaded, uh, either move it into a folder or move it off the USB stick and have this uh, .upg as the sole uh, file. Okay. Remove the USB stick from your computer and put it in either one of the slots on the analyzer faceplate. It doesn't matter, uh, either one. And uh, uh, actually, Jared, if you want to switch over to the uh, camera here, all right. So I'm going to stick my USB stick in. Uh, again, it doesn't matter, either slot. And if you notice, the, the analyzer is actually powered off. So that's step one to make sure your analyzer is powered off. Insert your USB stick into the uh, either slot. And then we're going to press and hold the one key, all right? So you're going to press and hold. You're going to maintain pressure on that one key, and then you're going to simply power on the analyzer. Uh, at this point, once you see this screen pop up, you can let go of the one key. And now we're just going to follow the instructions uh, on the screen. So insert the USB flash drive. We've already done that. So we're going to press OK. And now it's just going to go through the process of updating. Uh, this will take about 20 seconds or so, uh, depending on how... Uh, how large the, the, the file is, uh, and then as it goes through looking for the, the software file, it's going to uh, validate it that it's the right file, it's a good file, uh, it'll start upgrading uh, the, the, the file in process. Give that just a second to work. SP7 is a pretty large file uh, because what we've done is added in, uh, we call it localization. Uh, localization means now we've got an op you, you can go in and change the language in the analyzer uh, from English, uh, Russian, and Mandarin. Uh, so you've got those different options. So if you happen to be in Russia somewhere, you can actually do your uh, prop balance, uh, no longer having to worry about reading English. It'll be uh, in, in Russian, uh, same for uh, Mandarin. Give you just a second, program in the root file system. It'll go through the whole process. Got a flurry of off-camera activity going on around me. Sorry if I'm a bit distracted there. At this point, now we're going to, everything was good, update successful, press OK to restart. Uh, for some of you Viper 2 customers, just want to throw this out there as well. Uh, if you, with the Viper 2, if you do this upgrade uh, in the field, you'll have an extra screen that pops up asking you if you want to update your TAC board. That's not something that's available in the Cobra 2, so you don't have to worry about that. But just for our Viper 2 customers out there that may be watching this, uh, you'll have an extra screen. Now we'll press OK to restart, and it'll go through the reboot process. Now, since this is the first time this analyzer has been upgraded from SP6 to SP7, and it's such a large file, it's going to take a few seconds for it to upgrade and move over. Uh, but that's just the basic uh, process for doing a field update or an upgrade uh, to the software. Uh, Jared, if you want to kick back over to the uh, slideshow, we'll move into uh, reviewing uh, past jobs. All right. And if you have any questions about uh, the, the software update and upgr upgrade process, uh, feel free to check out those release notes on our website or uh, give us a call or give us an email and we can walk you through that process um, as well. All right, so reviewing past jobs. Let's say we want to get back and we want to go and, and uh, print the report or we just want to verify that the... the jobs that we did last time, we want to take a look at those and just review the information in, in them. Uh, so what you would do is you would go from the main menu and you would select your propeller balance function. Uh, you'd actually select whatever function you want to go in and review a job on. This is universal across any of our job functions, but just uh, for the staying on topic today with propeller balance, we'd select propeller balance. No, no, we're not switching yet. We're just going to stay on the computer screen. Uh, select uh, the propeller balance function and press OK. And then we'd move down and select manage jobs and press OK. And then we'd, uh, the next screen that pops up will be your review screen. And Jarrett, now at this point, can you kick over to the analyzer uh, screen? 
Now we're live here and we're going to review the data. So let's go in and look at the job that we did the last time. Uh, if you remember, if you were here for this on Thursday, we named that SIM. Uh, the SIM A was actually uh, uh, somebody else coming along playing around, playing around with the analyzer. And I won't name any names, Chris, uh, but possibly did something uh, messing around with it. But just throwing that out there. My, he's my boss. I get to pick on him every now and then. But I'm going to select the job that I want to look at uh, for review and press OK. And here's your overview. Uh, I don't have my little red pen anymore either. I forgot that. Uh, but the, you have run one. Oh, look at that Chris coming in out of the wings. Uh, so the, the first thing you're going to see is your run number. So what run we're on. It's obviously going to start on run number one. And then here's some of the information column, your speed, uh, your magnitude uh, in this column, which actually the speed was actually a little bit further over. But uh, your speed is at 1724 is what we caught it at. Vibration was going to be. Uh, 0.34 and then at 270 degrees and then my ICFs uh, what that ended up being uh, the, at the uh, beginning of run one it was defaulted by horsepower uh, to 30.06 at 270 degrees uh, and we'll see how that changed by the end of the run uh, as the analyzer learned uh, so the first time it asked for a solution of uh, 10.1 grams at zero degrees and what we actually installed if you remember back I said no I don't want to add 10.1 grams because that's going to be uh, way too much weight for that little simulator that we had and I told it that I'm actually going to put 1.4 at zero. You can go in and select the polar view and see all of this information displayed on what's similar to a polar chart uh, view at this uh, screen. Uh, you can press the review key to go back and then using your left and right arrow keys you can cycle through run your different runs and all that information will change. If you notice uh, the magnitude here will show up in red uh, anytime it's above 0 0.07, so 0 0.08 or higher, it's going to show up in red. And then anything below uh, at 0 0.07 or lower, it'll show up in green just to give you a visual indication that, hey, um, everything looks good, the data looks good, the, the vibes are good. Okay. Uh, if you also notice that by the time we got to run three, our ICF had changed quite a bit from that 30.6 at 270. Our final ICF is 9.16 uh, uh, tips at um, 297 degrees uh, phase angle wise. And then our final solution was 3.1 grams at 27 degrees. Because we were using pre-drilled holes, you can select your F1 hole weights and it comes back to the screen here and shows you what the analyzer suggested and what you actually installed uh, at the job uh, uh, depending on your runs. And again, you can go use your left and right arrow keys to cycle through uh, that information. Uh, there you can also Again, switch back to the polar view at any time uh, to see what, what was showing. Now, interesting from the polar view is you'll see your circle here. Your circle is where you began. This is where you started out. Your uh, little blue dot, and this, depending on how many runs you have, would, would depend on how many little blue dots you've got. Uh, but for the, the first weight application, you can see where it shifted my uh, the magnitude, my phase, uh, slightly. And then by run three, you can see in my square box where I finished everything off, that's where I landed and where I finished the job at. Uh, so ideally, that's a, that's a great scenario that we want to have is, is to have a, a three runs and done uh, scenario to where we had uh, run number one is with no weights installed, uh, taking a, a, a raw calculation, installing our test weight to have a, a known amount of weight at a known location to induce a measurable change. And then based off of this run, and uh, these two runs here, and what happened, the analyzer was then able to calculate out a solution that was able to get me down uh, to 0 .02 uh, ips and bring me right into the almost bullseye on the, on the chart. Okay, So that's uh, reviewing the data in the analyzer. Uh, so you can press OK and brings you back to your job list. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to get Jarrett to go back to the screen, to the PowerPoint here. And we're going to talk about creating a report. So that's all well and good that we can see the information in the analyzer, but you may want to have uh, some sort of printed documentation to put in your files for your records uh, or something to go in a logbook or something to show uh, QA, QC, uh, FAA, customer, whatever the case may be. And so we've got an option for that as well. So for creating a report, that's very similar. You'd go to the main menu, select your propeller balance function, and press OK. Select Manage Jobs and press OK. 
And at this point, instead of selecting review, you just go one down to create report and you select OK. At this point, Jarrett kicked me over to the, to the menu here and I'll show you how uh, the analyzer, all right. So at this point, I'm gonna create report. One of the things I wanna point out is look here at, at, the, at the sidebar in the status view. You see here there's pending reports and right now there's zero. Uh, I, I call this the buffer. So when we create a report, uh, the analyzer is gonna store that report in the buffer until you get all the ones that you've you wanted to create done. So let's just say that you do this for a living. This is not just a hobby for you. This is something you do for a living. And you do three or four pro uh, propeller balance jobs in a day. And you're gonna print all this stuff out at the end of the day for your own records uh, to keep. So you'd, you'd go through, uh, select create report, uh, generate all the reports in the analyzer at first, and then you'll see this, uh, this number increase by one for however many reports you create. And then when you're ready to export them off, uh, I'll show you that process there as well. So I'm going to hit OK for Create Report. It's going to pull up the two jobs that are on the analyzer. We're going to select the one that uh, we completed and we just reviewed. So I'm going to say Sim, press OK. The analyzer is going to go through the process of creating report. It's a three-page report. And then once it's completed, you should see your pending reports here go up to one. And now uh, an information screen here saying the report's created. At this point, we can select F5, continue, and if there's other jobs that we wanted to create reports for, we can do that. So if I wanted to, to create a report of this uh, Sim A job, I could do that there as well. So I'd create the report, uh, rendering, and then you'll see your pending reports go up uh, by uh, one there as well. All right, so press continue. To get these reports off the analyzer, now I'm gonna take my USB stick Again, plug it into either port, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna go back one key, either press the F0 key, or you can press the home key to go back to the main menu, either one. And now you'll see this XFRRPT key appear. Uh, that means transfer report. So now with my USB stick installed, I can press my F1 key, and it'll transfer the reports onto the USB stick. Once it's on the USB stick, get back to uh, the slideshow here. Um, Jared, actually, can you pull up that report? It'll be in a folder called ACES underscore reports. And then now I've got Jared here to pull up uh, the report. And so we'll kind of uh, bear with me just a moment and I'll have Jared uh, scroll up as we go. So hang on right there. So the very first thing you're going to see is, under, is the job title. So it's going to be a job, uh, it's going to be a propeller job. And then the name of the job is SIM. Uh, the next block down is the customer name. That's going to be the SIM name, when you started it, when the last time anything you know, uh, about it was updated. And then towards the right over there, it'll say job status. So if this is a report that you hit the complete job or, or quit job, uh, that'll change that job status to complete. Uh, the next little bit underneath there, that aircraft registration, engine serial number, type, all of that, that's all that optional information I was telling you about when you first started the job. Uh, that will all show up on this report if you enter that information in. Again, really useful for documentation purposes afterwards. You'll have all that information on there, so at least you won't have to go back through some other records to try to figure out well, uh, which, uh, what was the serial number of that prop, what was its type, what was the position, all that. Uh, the next section down is the analyzer information. It's going to tell you what kind of analyzer it is. This is an ACES 2020 Cobra II analyzer. Uh, it gives you the serial number of the analyzer itself. It tells you the software version uh, that was installed. Uh, that way, if there's ever any kind of issues or questions, you could always contact us and we can tell you uh, what was uh, different or changed or anything about that version of software from an updated version. Another big point is the Cal date. Uh, that is right there on the report. It lets you know when the last time this analyzer had been in here to TEC for calibration purposes. Uh, that'll show up on your, on your analyzer. The next section down is the owner information. That will tell you all the information about you. When you buy your Cobra II kit, whether it be an upgrade or a complete brand new purchase, all this, the, Scott and his team is going to ask you a bunch of questions about who you are, where you're at, what's your phone number. Real personal, but he's not asking you out, I promise. It's all to enter in this information here. Uh, to have the, This will show up on the report. Owner name, address, phone, email. That information is also changeable within the analyzer. So let's say you purchase this analyzer and uh, your, your base of operations change. You end up moving somewhere else and uh, you want to change that, your address, or you, 
you change your email address, you know, a different company name, whatever the case may be, you can go into the analyzer and change that. And if you have any questions about that, you just let me know. Give us a call at 865-671-2003 uh, or support at acesystems.com. Uh, the next section down there where it says properties, Jared, if you want to scroll to where that properties is all the way at the top of the screen, perfect. So that first uh, section there is going to tell you the sensor name. Now, well, actually, I'll give you the setup name and the version. So we didn't have any version control on this. This is for, uh, it's kind of a carryover from some of our fan and turbine guys and helicopter guys so they can keep track of, uh, from OEM uh, engine partners and um, uh, airframe partners to keep track of the version numbers uh, so we can prove to them that it, we're, we're keeping them up to date, keeping them moving. Uh, that next section down is going to be your vibe sensor, so what kind of sensor it was, uh, what channel it was plugged into, and what the, the specifications for that sensor was. Uh, so in this case, we had channel A, we had a 991 Delta-1 plugged in, that's that uh, accelerometer, uh, and it gives you all the information about it. Uh, the next little section down, uh, if that right below that 991 D1, Jared, if that, where it says propeller balance setup sim, if you want to pull that up to where you can get right there, perfect. This is the setup configuration. So if you saw our very first video on uh, Tuesday of last week, uh, we walked through and built this setup. All right, so this is, gives you all of the parameters uh, of what was going on when we built uh, this, this particular setup to do this job. Uh, everything down to the, the weights, uh, the individual hull weights, the total weight for the whole, air, uh, whole propeller, uh, where we're installing our TAC, where we're installing our VOD sensor, uh, even down to where we're uh, having our individual holes uh, laid out because this, this particular application had pre-drilled holes uh, that we were using. So instead of the analyzer giving us a, a grams at phase angle, it was telling us grams at hole number uh, in that setup. So this gives you all that information about the setup itself. All right, scroll down to the next section. It'll be on the next page. Uh, so this gives you the, the list of what happened, right? So this is what we did. You can, you can keep going to where you get to that prop balance at three run right there. Perfect. Uh, so that top chart is going to give you a basic overview of you know, run one, two, and three. Uh, there's my RPM. There's my magnitude and my degrees. Yep, right there. Perfect, Jared. Uh, the shows what, for each run. That sensor IC, uh, AICF in the middle that shows you how the analyzer has learned, what kind of influence the, uh, the weight had on that particular propeller or particular application. In my case, it was a little plexiglass disc. So it shows you what kind of uh, weight changes had. And if you remember, I went back and re-ran that again uh, with that uh, known amount of weight, and it took me two runs instead of the three runs uh, to complete that job. The next column over is the, under the suggested. That's what the analyzer wanted you to put on. And then under the installed column is what we actually did, what we actually installed. Uh, if you look at the next chart down, the prop weight placement for three runs, it tells you what the whole number was and what the gram amount of weight was that we put weight on for each of the runs uh, installed. Uh, you can scroll on down. Uh, this section here gives you the final spot that you can, you, you know, in the case that you did something a little bit different than what the analyzer asked to or if you had to move on and and uh, add weight so you didn't do the holes option and you were using on the spinner retaining ring and you had to move down to the bulkhead so you use the weight calculator. Uh, you could put in that gram and degrees uh, marking there and then it gives you a spot to do a, a maintenance sign off and uh, put a license number in there if so desired. And then on the last page uh, for the report is just a graphical representation of those polar charts that shows you, uh, what you where you started, what your next run moved was, and then where you ended up. Uh, that that uh, effective chart over there just shows you what the effective um, movement was for the weight. And so that's what a basic uh, propeller balance uh, job report uh, looks like. Again, if you have any questions about this report or uh, some of the things you saw in it that you may have questions about, again, give us a call or uh, shoot us an email about it. Okay, uh, come on, let's go back to the slideshow. All right, so now let's say we've, we've got a... a USB issue. We have a problem with our USB. Uh, you lost it. Uh, it got ran over by the maintenance truck. Uh, kid got a hold of it and chunked it out the window of the truck. Whatever the case may be, you need a new USB. So there's an option here that you can reformat uh, a new USB stick uh, to work in the analyzer. I will say that if you use another an a USB stick other than the one that comes in our kit, 
uh, you will have to format that USB stick in the analyzer. Uh, you know, if, if you don't want to deal with that hassle, give Scott a call. He'll gladly sell you a, a pre-formatted USB stick. Uh, but if you, if you want to try to do it on yourself, it's a really easy process. Uh, first thing you're going to do uh, is main menu and select analyzer management and press OK. You'll then go down to uh, database management, press OK. Insert the USB drive into either port on the analyzer, doesn't matter, uh, uh, either one's fine. Oops, sorry, got a little clicky there. Then you're going to go down and select that format USB drive. It's all the way on the bottom of the screen. Now, when you select that and hit OK, this will completely erase whatever you had on that USB drive, and it will not be recoverable. Uh, so please don't call and tell us that you, you erased uh, your grandma's photos off your USB drive and we can't get them back for you. No. The only time, the only way that you can edit the report, I'm sorry, the, the question was uh, from the customers, can you edit the report? Uh, the answer is no, and that's uh, kind of a two-fold part. So one is security. We wanted to make sure that there wasn't an opportunity for someone to come along at the end of a job and falsify any documentation records. So they've got a, a, a previous job that was good, and they want to tweak some numbers and change that out. All right, so we just wanted to make sure that wasn't, uh, wasn't an option or a, a potential case. We didn't want to be the wink link in that, uh, that uh, problem. Uh, the way that you can make sure that you have the, the correct information is at the beginning of the job uh, for that customer information, all that optional screens, those first two screens you get, uh, fill that stuff out. Take a look at it before you hit OK. Uh, I'm as guilty as anybody as I like to, to hurry up and through and I get, get a, a case of the fat finger and just hit OK when I probably shouldn't. Uh, but uh, to quick answer the question is no, you can't edit the, the report, uh, but you can verify that the information is correct um, prior to starting. But uh, good question. Okay, uh, so when we go into format in the USB, again, make sure that whatever was on the USB stick uh, that you wanted to keep, that you've moved it somewhere else. Because once you format it in the USB, uh, on, in the analyzer, it will completely erase it and we can't recover it. Okay, it's gone. Uh, the analyzer will automatically write onto the USB stick uh, a couple folders for you called aces underscore setups and aces underscore import. Um, in the propeller balance world, we won't use these as often. This is more for our rotor track and balance guys and our fan turbine balance guys and our um, uh, vibration uh, survey guys uh, to get setups on and, and uh, get uh, job files onto the analyzer. And actually, um, Todd Underwood is going to cover that probably uh, on his rotor track and balance uh, session. So totally throwing Todd under the bus on this one uh, for him to cover uh, a little bit more in depth on that. But just wanted to give you a heads up that that's, that will be created on your USB stick for you uh, when you format it. So expect to see those on the drive. Um, another option that you can do is retrieve the user's manual from uh, the, the analyzer or the website. Uh, the user's manual is actually available for download on the analyzer itself. It's there on the analyzer uh, for you to download. Uh, one of the nice things about uh, having it on the analyzer, as long as you've got some, something on your PC that can read, or your computer that can read a PDF, uh, you, can, you have the, maintenance ma the user's manual at your fingertips, ready to go. All right. Uh, the latest revision of the user's manual is always available on our website. The, the revision that's in the analyzer is current with the software package that you have installed on the analyzer. Uh, the user's manual is embedded into the software package when we release it to the customers and to, on the website uh, or here at the facility when we do the calibration process. Uh, but if we make a change uh, in between uh, your Cal due date uh, and make a change to the, owner's, the user's manual or the uh, software, that's going to be available on our website. So to, to get the user's manual off the analyzer, uh, the first thing you're going to do is go to the main menu and select analyzer management and press OK. Insert your USB drive into either port on the analyzer faceplate. Again, it doesn't matter, either one. And then you're going to select copy user manual to USB. This will automatically copy the user manual over to the USB and when you uh, remove the USB and plug it into your computer, 
uh, you'll see a folder set, uh, named ACES underscore manuals. Inside there will be the, uh, it'll say like Gen, uh, Gen 2 um, user's manual, and I'll give you the software version as well. And that'll be the, the complete PDF copy uh, of the user's manual. Okay. Uh, it's also available on our website, uh, the same locations where you went in to get the software updates, just below or just above that is be the technical library option. It'll have all of our uh, user's manuals uh, available on the website, and that's across all of our different, um, uh, brand, our different applications, so the Cobra 2, the 2020, the Viper 2, the 4040, our tracks, everything, all the user's manual is available on the website uh, there. Um, so again, I kind of went through that kind of fast and blew through, so if you've got any questions or want some more detailed information, uh, please feel free to uh, give us a call or to reach out to us on the, uh, the chat board or the, uh, via email. Uh, with that, I am going to turn it over to your final thoughts with Scott. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Josh. Oh, it's final thoughts, but it's thoughts. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, again, I want to thank you all again for joining us today. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, again, I hear from the, uh, from the sales end of things is that uh, for reports, uh, gathering this data and information that Josh has went uh, over so well, is that a couple things that, you know, for record keeping on the, either your plane or other people's uh, aircraft, uh, or again, for trending. Uh, again, that's a word I hear quite a bit. Trending, uh, wanting to be able to, if there's a problem aircraft or a problem issue, being able to look at historical data over a period of time on whether it's the you know, vibration, the prop, aircraft, airframe, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, good reasons to keep these reports and use this function, uh, managing the data. Um, again, if anybody again out there has our legacy equipment wants to upgrade, uh, or wants to get a new system. Uh, we've had quite a few, again, success in selling some new complete Cobra 2 systems uh, d during this, these webinars. So uh, please give us a call or an email at sales at acesystems.com uh, or contact if there's a technical issue or more technical questions uh, regarding this data. Contact Josh at the phone number he pr previously provided or email at support at acesystems.com. Again, I want to thank you all for attending another week, and I'll be coming back in on Thursday uh, to me go over the uh, 1015, the single channel analyzer, uh, more for the experimental market and single uh, uh, individual users.